Good morning, darlings. I don't even know how to explain <laughs> what's, how many things that have happened in the last handful of days in my Trotter Tribe's life. I spent an incredible time um, in Kansas this weekend with some amazing women at First Baptist Mulvane, and I want to definitely say hello to them and good morning because I know that they are joining us. And it is it was such a joy to be with them. And then jumped into my Suburban and blazed from Kansas to Oklahoma City, picked up my tribe of little people to go on to move to Dallas, where I am presently at. My feet are on the earth in Dallas, and if you have been following me or those that are my dearest friends and family, they know what I mean when I say I am sitting right now actually on my kitchen counters in my Hobbit house, and I'm going to be sharing more about the adventures that my Trotter tribe will have inside this Hobbit house, but I am actually sitting on the kitchen counter because presently speaking, we are under a sea of boxes and mismatched and misplaced furniture and we're trying to straighten it all out but we are just beside ourselves so excited. I know that there are so many of you that have prayed me and prayed our family into this opportunity. We're really looking forward to being here and making a full investment in this community and I just can't wait to see what God has for us because we know that these are certain days that we're living in, not just ordinary haphazard days. I really do know that. I'm living that. And so where we start this week for this month journey with Blue and Good Morning Darling is really personal for me. It's personal because I have lived ordinary days where I just slough around and I just slosh around and just kind of honestly feeling sorry for myself, a lot of self-pity. But then at some point, God clicked the light and he just reminded me that these days that we are unfolding before us are certain days that he has laid out. And so that's why I'm so excited about where we are starting this week on this Monday morning. Um, we will go. Uh, I, I did want to go ahead and say that I'm so excited. I've seen your posts on how you're using those of you that do have this booklet, how you're using uh, the weekly menu guide to plan your meals for your families or for your people or for your friends or your roommates and you're using your grocery list and that I love that so much because that's how I plan on doing tomorrow um, when I find the grocery store <laughs> and but I did want to go over the very first scripture that is in front of our calendar page and it says an amazement seized them all and they glorified God and were filled with awe saying we have seen extraordinary things today now that is how we are going to finish this month but it is important for what we're going to talk about today during our week one study now you have one devotional in your booklet guide um, that you will go through and I'm not going to go through all of that today but uh, we will meet with videos on Mondays and Fridays and so those of you uh, that do not have this booklet I do want to go through a portion of it. And this week we talk about uh, Luke 5, 17, just that opening text. It says, on one of those days as he was teaching, indicating Jesus uh, was teaching, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. That means it was present. The living power of God was with Jesus to heal, but he was teaching. And we'll talk about that later uh, on the blog this week. But today I want to focus on the first handful of words out of Luke 5 17. In your study guide it says to write those first five words down. Um, I've written them out here. It says on one of those days. The King James Version, um, I all my scriptures are going to be out of the English Standard Version, but the King James Version says it this way, and it came to pass on a certain day. And I do want you to write that down, that it came to pass on a certain day, like a parallel, whatever your uh, scripture text, however it reads, but write that down. In this way, the word certain is extremely important for us. The Greek transliteration for on a certain day is a word called mia. Uh, it pronounced M-E-A, but it's spelled M-I-A, and the meaning only one first, a certain. Stating that was just on one of those days seems like it was just kind of a blah, regular, run-of-the-mill, ordinary day, and it gets my brain kind of powering down like, oh, it's nothing exciting is going to happen then. Although we know the story and something incredibly exciting happens. Remember how we're going to finish. They saw extraordinary things, so it was a certain day. It was only one. It was first. It was certain. There is a distinct difference in how we read these first five words. Look at the difference between the definitions of each word. And I have them there for you in your study guide, but I'll read them for us. 
The definition of ordinary says, with no special or distinctive feature, normal, what is commonplace or standard. I would be willing to bet that most of us feel like our lives are kind of ordinary, that we're just kind of running the mill, we're doing the normal things, running the normal schedule, you know, having the same situations over and over and over again. But I'd like to actually suggest otherwise, because here's the definition of certain. Known for sure, established beyond doubt, not having any doubt, fully convinced. God is convinced the direction he is taking your life. He's fully convinced. He's certain of it. He knows exactly what he's doing with your life and my life. He knows exactly how the days are unfolding, how he's scripting your plan, all the hard, all the good, all the people, all the interactions, all the experiences. He knows what he's doing. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a great hope and a mighty future. And that is not to be said lightly. That's not just a just brush stroke over. Those are intentional words spoken from God's mouth to the children of Israel in context. He was telling them when they were panicking that he knew what he was doing with them. He knew where he was walking them. They need only continually yield. Because the truth is that ordinary days are not just ambiguous days with no meaning. They're not. They're not just run-of-the-mill days. They are numbered, counted, considered, and laid out as certain days where Jesus intentionally desires to engage us and send forth his healing power. I want you to position your heart properly this week, this week, all week. Do it intentionally because I'm telling you right now it is not going to come easy, and I am living that. I it is so easy for me to get in my own perspective or my own power or my own strength or my own to-do list or my own just trying to get things done, especially where we've been moving and traveling and living as professional nomads. I feel like I've just been living in my bags for months. But here's the deal. It's so intentional what God is doing. If you will see it that way, I promise you, he will surprise you. He will bring things up that you did not expect, that you did not know were going to unfold. But he knows because these days that we're living out are certain days. In our marriages, there are certain days. Ladies, let's pray for our husbands. And I am not saying that because it's easy. I'm saying it's because it's hard. Let's make a decision to pray for our husbands. Let's be intentional with our kids. Not because we need to be some sort of like superpower parent, but because we're really imperfect parents. And so let's make a choice just like I did tonight when things got crazy and bedtime was nuts. And I just was like, everybody just needs to go to bed. And after about 15 minutes of walking out of the kids' room, I walked back into my daughter's room and I woke her up and I said, baby girl, mama was so tired, but I love you so much and I want you to know how much you mean to the kingdom. I really want us to be intentional even when it doesn't feel right or doesn't feel good. I want us to realize that God is laying out certain days for extraordinary purposes and I want us to be positioned. One thing I say in here, and I want you to write down, if you do not have the booklet, but I want you to just tuck away into your heart as I say, the game changer is found in how we position our hearts to listen. Don't give up. I said it this weekend several times, and if you've followed anything I've done, I say it all the time, that God is not after perfect. He's after persistence. Ladies, do not give up. Do not give up. If things are hard and you're waiting for fruit to grow, do not give up. Keep positioning your heart. Keep pushing yourself under the shadow of God's wings. I promise you, you are about to see extraordinary things unfold. I promise. I was telling the group that I spoke with this weekend that the only thing God wants sometimes to tell us and remind us is that he has seen us wrestle. He is watching us go through things. He is watching us stay persistent. He is watching us yield over and over and over again on the days when it is hard. And he is saying, all I need from you is just to not give up. Keep positioning your hearts. That's my challenge for us this week. I want to see. I want to know. I want you to tell me about it on social media. I want you to send messages. I want you to tell your friends about it. I want to know how we are positioning our hearts to hear from the Lord, to really see certain days unfold with extraordinary purpose. I can't wait to see you later this week. Have an awesome week.